The following is an introduction to the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. The material presented here is intended to accompany a textbook for a first-year accounting class. Sarbanes-Oxley, or as we call it SOX, was the name of a piece of legislation sponsored by Sarbanes, a Senator Oxley, a representative, back in 2002. This was a response to a bunch of accounting scandals that rocked the United States. In a very short period of time, a number of companies like Enron, WorldCom, Tyco, Sunbeam, all of these companies either went out of business or were forced to file for bankruptcy shortly after it was discovered that the company and the accounting firm that had audited them were collaborating together to mislead the public and to lie about their financial statements. Because of all of these companies going out of business, Congress felt the need to address this failure of public accountants to be objective and to be independent. And so Congress required, through this legislation, uh, that companies place a higher priority on effective internal control procedures. Internal control procedures are something that have been around for a long, long time. Sarbanes-Oxley did not create those controls, but they wanted a higher priority on those. In 1992, the Treadway Commission came up with the Integrated Framework for Internal Control, and the next three objectives that we're going to look at are the three objectives that all internal controls should be trying to accomplish. First of all, we have to understand that we are not always going to be able to provide proof beyond the shadow of a doubt that these things are happening, but internal control should provide a reasonable assurance that a reasonable person would believe that these three things are true. That assets are safeguarded and used for business purposes. We don't want customers running off with our assets. We don't want employees using the assets for their personal reasons. We want to make sure that those things are used by the business for the business. We also need to know that that information is accurate. The accounting records are accurate and the financial statements are true. We're going to come back to these time and time again. These are the objectives that throughout this process we have to make sure that we're providing reasonable assurance uh, to know that this stuff is happening. When we look at employees complying with laws and regulations, what we're mostly concerned with is that our employees are not committing fraud. So when we talk about fraud, we have to understand that that's the intentional act of an employee to deceive the employer for their own personal gain. So not an accident, something that they're doing intentionally. Now that same Treadway Commission report said that every organization has elements that contribute to the ability of the company to maintain control over their assets, their business information and their employees. And there are these elements that contribute to their ability to do that. The first one of those elements is the control environment. Now, the control environment is simply the attitude of management and employees about the importance of internal controls. You can still have accurate information or employees complying if everybody's attitude is crummy toward internal controls, but it's not going to be as good. It's not going to be as high a probability. So when we're looking at the control environment, we need to see what things are contributing towards an environment that's going to be conducive to safeguarding assets, keeping business information accurate, and complying with laws and regulations. Control environment often includes the personnel policies, how detailed those are, the management's philosophy and operating style. You can have a manager that is really laid back. Now that doesn't mean that you are going to have great internal controls or really weak internal controls. A laid-back manager may allow employees to have the freedom to do their job well and effectively. A laid-back manager might also give employees the freedom to steal some of the company's assets. So the operating style or management's philosophy is not going to dictate whether or not the assets are safeguarded. It's simply going to impact that. The business's organizational structure, is it a very flat structure? Is it a very uh, hierarchical structure? Once again, this is not necessarily going to dictate whether or not the company has good internal control, but it is going to influence uh, the ability of a company to provide that reasonable assurance. The next thing that we have to do is we have to do risk assessment. Where are those areas in which a company might lose money? 
where are the risks that the business information is going to be inaccurate, that lies are going to be told? Where are the areas that employees may not comply with laws and regulations? Risk assessment includes uh, competition. How competitive of a marketplace is a company in? If it's a highly competitive marketplace, employees may have incentive to lie. They may have incentive to cut corners. If it's not a competitive marketplace, they will have probably less incentive. It doesn't mean they won't do it. It just means that there may be less risk associated with that. Is the industry that the company's operating in highly regulated? Oil and gas have lots of regulations. Food service companies have lots of health and safety uh, regulations. Uh, manufacturing concerns can have lots of OSHA regulations. So the more regulations that govern a business, the more opportunities for the business to be in violation. And so uh, the higher the regulated, the more risk there's going to be that employees aren't complying. Economic factors. What kind of economic environment is this company operating in? If there's lots of unemployment, employees may feel like they have to perform at a really high level or else they'll be replaced with somebody else that's standing in line waiting for a job. So there may be more risk that that employee is going to fudge, that they're going to cut corners, that they're going to lie about economic results of the company. So economic factors can create more risk uh, and they can also alleviate some of that risk. And then the needs of the customer. Are the customers uh, very mobile? Are they going to leave us for another company, uh, for another supplier, or are they very loyal? The more loyal the customer, then there's going to be low, lower levels of risk. If the customers are highly motivated to leave and find a better deal, well then there's going to be a little more risk associated with that. The control procedures are those things that we do to try to make sure that our company is meeting our internal control objectives. Some of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're separating duties, that we don't have the same person receiving the money, making the deposit, and writing down the amount that was collected. Uh, those jobs need to be put under the control of different people. Uh, we need to make sure that we have competent people, that they're trained, that they're rotating duties, that we make sure that people take mandatory vacation, to see that uh, if somebody is paying fictitious bills, that they're them depositing in their personal bank account, if we make them take vacation, the next person we're just going to find out, hey, who is this person that we're writing a check to? Um, we don't know them. So control procedures are, are all of those things, uh, video cameras over inventory, all of those things that we do to make sure that those three objectives are being met. The next one is monitoring. Once we put procedures in place, we have to actually look at them and monitor them and see that uh, we are making progress, not making progress, that we're accomplishing those objectives or not accomplishing those objectives. Controls don't do any good if you aren't monitoring the results. And so monitoring is just making sure that those procedures are being followed and anything that we learn from them is being communicated, which is the last one. Information and communication. Once we see what the results are, if there are things that we need to change, if there are things we need to be concerned about, we've got to communicate that to the right authorities, to the right people in the company, so that we can learn and improve and, and make sure that those objectives continue to be met.